one in just a second. I'm going to be introducing author Elena Mickelson. And I think you say Mickelson, but I will find out. Anyway, her debut novel is called Wrapped in the Stars. And I love this book. Okay. I know I say it all the time, but I am just so blessed because I get to find these books that are so good. And this book is good and it's a debut novel. And I had a hard time believing that. I kept going back and checking to make sure that it was her debut novel. So um, I can't wait to talk to her. Everyone, here is Elena. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be speaking with author Elena Michelson, and we're going to be talking about her debut novel, Wrapped in the Stars. And you know what? I have it on my um, Kindle. I forgot to tell you that. I have it on my Kindle. I don't know if you have a book near you, but um, it's such a cool, cool cover, and I want to show it off so that everybody can see it. Look at this cover to find the camera and um it's just beautiful and i am so grateful that you are talking with me this book just came out february 19th it's brand new and i can't believe this but it is your debut novel and i double and triple checked this because i didn't believe it okay <laughs> that's very flattering oh my gosh when i find a novel like this that it's a debut and i have to keep going i'm like no she must have written so it's got to be there's got to be one i'm missing and and then i see him people saying it over and over oh debut novel i'm like okay fine it's her debut novel but it was so good elena let me oh, see if i can explain you. to you without like you know telling you i started reading it, right? I, and I'm reading a couple of books all the time, okay? All the time. And I kept going back to it and back to it. And I was like, okay, 10 more minutes on this book and then I'll go to the other one that I'm supposed to be reading right now. <laughs> and then I stayed up really late a couple nights ago and finished it and I don't know. There's, I, I don't give away the endings of anything. All I'm telling everybody is go read this book. Okay. It has, I love the timelines. They are amazing. You did it so well. Okay. I got drawn into these characters. Like I just love, I loved Maya. I loved Rebecca. I just, I didn't have a favorite because I loved both of them. And I, I, oh, I'm glad. yeah, I mean, you know what, in this day and age, I love reading stories about women that did things. Everybody talks about like what women are doing now what women do like right now. But when I read a story like this is back in the early 1900s and you go into a lot of detail about these women doctors and right. it's just crazy because I know that it's historical fiction. So I know that they're made up, but I'm sure you did your research and that was what was going on at that time over there, right? Yes, I did a lot of research, very thorough. I read a lot of biographies, autobiographies actually written by women doctors at that time. So I felt like I really got immersed into what they went through. I really enjoyed doing that, reading those autobiographies. I felt like I was in there with them. Yeah. And what I loved, I mean, you know, there are I, there are a lot of things I loved about this book. But when I was reading um, Rebecca's part, okay, and how she was so concerned about women, <laughs> women's health, I, I want to say, I was like, who thinks that's a new issue? Like, who thinks that started in the 70s that people started to become concerned about women's health? But she was already back in the early 1900s trying to help women who were in relationships, you know, about pregnancy, about, you know, their own health issues. And I was like, I didn't even realize that they worried about pregnancy issues back then. Back like then, right? Yeah, I really didn't think about it. You know, it's just not... Well, so many women were dying back then when they were giving birth. You would think there wasn't such a thing as women's health as in a topic, but women's physicians were concerned about it. You know, the, the women in particular who were becoming doctors, they didn't like the idea that so many women were dying while um, doing childbirth. So they started trying to do something about it. And I read this in their autobiographies that they were shocked that women were just dying left and right from such minor complications. So they really were trying to fight that. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, I was going to do like a little bit of wiki research and then I'm like, no, I'm going to ask you because you did all the research and you didn't know more. Right, than I did. I'm for you. 
That's right. <laughs> and you know more than they do. So um, she does go into some different like birth control. Like I always mm-hmm. thought that the only birth control that you would ever thought about back then was just um, calendar, you know, timing, right? Like that's, to me, that was like the, the first initial, but there was actually some other ways that they could prevent from getting pregnant. And I was shocked by wow. that. Yeah, the diaphragm was invented back then, and they called it a pessary back then. And at first, when I started reading it, I was like, what's a pessary? What the hell is that? And so it took me forever to try to find out what the pessary was, but that's basically the early version of a diaphragm. And it was really somewhat effective even back then. So it was it was that and then some sort of a sponge. And then, you know, before they even came up with a condom, yeah, they, they knew quite a bit about how to prevent in pregnancy. And there were different... You know, the, it was quite a primitive sort of diaphragm, but it did exist and it did help. And it was something they could use. Was that the, also the part of, um, you mentioned something about a silk, some, there was something with silk lining? Yeah, they, they were trying to come up with all different forms um, of diaphragms. And, oh, okay. you know, I, I was going through all these ancient manuscripts on it written, you know, in the late 1800s by different doctors, and so I was going through this Dutch Dutch manual on the first diaphragm, and I could not even understand fully what they were talking about, but there was a lot of information being passed around in Europe, but of course my book is set in Europe, so I had to kind of stick with the European terms, but yeah, they were using like some sort of a silk mechanism and all kinds of things that were being passed around, and uh, they, they were trying the best they could, you know, nothing was perfectly effective, but it was better than nothing. Right. And that's, you know, the fact that she, when she was talking about that, I was just like, wow, you know, back in, in World War One, I, I mean, this setting is near World War One, and um, that, I mean, she cared so much, she actually set up a place that, you know, that women who couldn't afford health care, which yes. I was like, you know, that's all we do in this country is fight about health care and, you know, try to figure health care out. And then she like sets up this place back in World War One where women could go to, I was like, that is just crazy, you know, that that was... But you know, the common thing back then that women would become physicians and they would find that it was very difficult for them to find employment and open up um, clinics and open up their private offices. So oftentimes um, they would set up some sort of a clinic that was more of a charity clinic is what I found out um, that would be open for, you know, poverty-stricken families and especially for women and children because women, you know, had caring hearts and they found that there were so many female patients that were mistreated by male physicians um, that they would, you know, practice somewhere. Um, I found out usually they would find some sort of a very lucrative financially practice with their either husbands or their fathers or, you know, some sort of a male. Um, and then they would open a little charitable practice on the side just for women and children. And often that's where they would provide some sort of a, training in contraception or some sort of hygiene training or training, you know, some sort of free exams for children or something to kind of help uh, with poverty or help with education for mothers, something of that sort. It was a very common thing for women physicians to do. Well, I'm, I'm so happy that you put it in this story. Okay. I mean, that just, let, I mean, we started talking about that because that's just what hit me. But so everybody understands the story a little bit. Um, we have the main character, Maya. My Maya. Oh, yeah. Okay. And she finds a ring. She's led to this ring. And it's got a very spiritual kind of metaphysical, I don't know. She has a very spiritual connection to this ring. And she starts having dreams about it. And she follows her intuition and dreams. And I don't want to tell anything more about it. But anyway, <laughs> it, it starts from there. But what I loved about um, this was like, I love to think that way. You know, that's what I was kind of drawn into that. It's like, I kind of want to believe that there is something like that. And you go into it in the very beginning of the book and in the prologue, you talk about the different energies, you know, and because you are um, a, ch- a child psycho- psychologist and yes. you talk about how energies transfer with jewelry or other things. And, uh, and did you find that in your studies or is that something like outside of your studies? Well, yeah, it's something I always want to believe in, that there's a little bit um, of us, a little part of us that kind of stays behind in this world. You know, people have different beliefs of what happens um, to us after we pass. But I kind of started thinking as a scientist, because I am a scientist, as being a psychologist, 
Right. You know, is there some sort of scientific explanation for why we can kind of feel spiritual in certain places as, you know, when we visit all places, we kind of think, oh, I can kind of feel some presences here, things like that. And as I was thinking about this book, um, because I got this idea that maybe somebody who would take an old object can feel a little bit part of its owner, I started thinking, well, let me explore some science behind it. And then I found quantum physics, which I personally hate physics. I can't stand <laughs> physics. But I was like, quantum physics, that's something interesting. And it actually has all these explanations for why this can happen. That There's a little bit of energy that's left over after anybody passes away. And that energy can go anywhere, can go any place. And so, yes, it can potentially go and be in a place. It could be in an object. It can be anywhere. And I thought, oh, my gosh, that's exactly what I need for this story. You know, a little bit of energy can be left behind after a person disappears. Or maybe it's a little bit of people's love. If love is very, very strong, can a little bit of the energy from that love stay behind even for 100 years? And that's really what the book is about, that, you know, if you have great love, it's not going to just disappear. It's going to stay behind. And where will it go? Right. Well, when um, when my mom was dying, um, one time when I had a transfer, they made me take all her jewelry off and this necklace Ooh. that I wear of hers. Like, so every yeah. time I was reading this, I was like, I never really thought about this. And I also have her earrings and mm -hmm. I actually got my ears pierced to put her diamonds in after she had passed away. And like, so I, I'm always wearing, I never take this off and I never take the earrings out. So I was like, I love that part of it. Cause I was like, well, you never know. Like there's a part of her energy, you know, attached to these things. Cause she never took them off for years and years. You know, she wore them. Uh, so. Yeah. And many of us, you know, keep objects from our family members who have passed on. I certainly have yeah. things from grandmother, from my great grandmother. Yeah. It's a very common thing. And why do we do that? Is it just a memento? Or do we feel that there's a little bit of that person that kind of stays behind with these things? And I don't think it's just a silly thing. I think there's some signs behind it. Yeah, I did too. And I like the fact that whenever I saw her, she had this necklace on. So like my kids, when they see me, like they'll remember me. Like, right. it's right yeah. there. You know what I mean? Like, and I never take it off. So it's like, that's what I remembered of her, you know? Yes. So but okay and then Rebecca like with her healing powers I was like this is like old school Reiki or have you ever said that Reiki <laughs> yeah um, that's exactly what it is yeah that's what she's doing because the, the book has a little bit of an aspect of magical realism right. and so I put in these little tiny magical touches all throughout and so that's what she's doing she's healing through her hands because she has this you know the book talks about healing power but they don't know what to call it back then in the early 1900s but yeah she's doing sort of a reiki whatever it is that it means to anybody but that's how she heals yeah well, you know and i've always believed that touch is so important because when people um are sick you know uh not just like a cold, but of cancer or something like that, you feel like you always want to touch them. Like you want mm -hmm. to transfer some, something. So I really do. I always believed in Reiki. I've always thought that there's just something to your touch that feeling another person's touch, even for them, that that transfers some kind of something. I don't know, but yeah. some kind of energy, well, positive energy. Something, I guess. you know, there's all kinds of things that we can't quite explain in this right. world. And I think, I had fun just kind of playing around with these for the book and, you know, seeing what would be interesting to different people and people are loving the book. They, they find it fascinating. So I'm glad that, you know, people liked it and had fun with it. Well, like I said, this book just came out a couple of weeks ago, like two yeah. weeks ago. And yeah. I, I have all these like book blogger friends on Instagram and they kept saying, read this book, read this book. So I, you know, <laughs> for a debut novel, I just want you to know how special that is to have these people like reading your book and being like, you have to read this book. You have to like to get that kind of like attention for it. You must just be so happy about that because it's just making me super happy. Yes. You know, because everybody's seeing, and this is, I mean, you are an amazing storyteller and you know oh, and you can you. just tell in this book i mean it, the, the story just keeps it just has you like okay just one more chapter okay just one more chapter. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what every author wants to hear you know that you couldn't put the book down that's what that's what i was going for so i'm thrilled to hear that that was the effect thank you well and you the love story you know you have us so going because as maya maya i don't know why i can't say that name I keep saying Maya, but it's not Maya. It's Maya. <laughs> As she's Maya, like, Maya. It's actually Maya. It is Maya. 
Yes. So I was right. Okay, good. Like I, that's what <laughs> I heard when I was reading it, but I don't know why I was thinking, well, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know why, but okay. So as she's discovering things and, and tracing down and then you're getting the love story of Rebecca and you're like, what's going to happen? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what is going to happen? And uh, it was just such a great story. And of course we have, this has everything. It's got romance. It's, it's World War One. We're finding, I found so much stuff out about Lenin that I didn't yeah. know at the time. I, it, seriously, the, you we you know the the bits of history that you weave in this story, they were like little things that I don't know that everybody knew. World War One is um, an interesting war. We didn't learn that much about it, but it's like the little things that you put in. Like I didn't know that that's where he was. He was in Bern when he was trying to get control of or plan the Russian Revolution. Right, that's, that's what happened. happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which you know. I didn't learn in history, so that's why I love historical fiction. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody's reading World War One books right now. It is a big thing. World War Two kind of went through a thing. Now I'm seeing all kinds of World War One books because it's a hundred years, and we're coming up on you know the Romanovs, and everybody's all you know interested in it and traveling to Russia. I know so many tours that are going on over there from my Russian novelists, and um, so it, the timing of this is just perfect. Yeah, and you know, um, I learned about Lenin when I was growing up because I'm actually from Ukraine, mm -hmm. but somehow I did not remember that there was a part of planning a revolution that took place in Switzerland, and I played the story in Switzerland, and as I was doing a lot of background research, that's when I stumbled upon the fact that he was there, and the story wasn't necessarily going to go there in the first place, and then I was like, wait a minute, but he is right there, so I have to put him in the story, so he wasn't going to be in the story at first, but then it just happened to be perfect that he was right there. And I said, well, it's a historical novel. I have to put historical figures in it. Right. So it just ended to be, you know, it ended up, it ended up being like a bonus that there was this great historical figure I can put in there. It was kind of fun. Yeah, and that but people were getting all excited. Yeah, what I loved about it was that, you know, seeing it from that side of how people were thinking, like they really thought he was going to save like they were really getting behind him in a way of like, well, these poor people need saving, you know? And I don't right. know, it just had a different way. I haven't read that like perspective before. So I loved reading about it like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I always knew um, that Rebecca's, you know, uh, fiance was going to get involved in the revolution. I just didn't know that it was going to be kind of to that extent. So that was fun. Right. Well, that's so cool. I, I did read that you were from Ukraine and, I've never been over, I've never been to Europe, I've never been, I'm in Pennsylvania, I've been around this country, but I've never been over there, but <laughs> as we speak, my youngest daughter is in um, Amsterdam for the week of okay. college, and uh, so she's getting to experience Europe, and I'm really happy about that, because I never got to, but maybe, maybe someday I'll get to go over there, and the guy I was just talking to was from Manchester, so I'm like talking to people that have been all over the place, so it's really fun, it's really fun to be able to do that. But anyway, so, th all right, so this book comes out. What is up next? Like, are you on contract well, I'm, for another one, or how's that? Yeah, I'm shifting gears a little bit from historical fiction. I'm writing um, a psychological suspense that I'm oh. very, very excited about. Um, the story was just firmly in my head as I was finishing up Wrapped in the Stars, and now I'm almost done with it. I'm sort of finishing up the last uh, probably 50 pages. I'm really excited to finish it, and... Um, get that story on the way. It doesn't have a contract yet for publication, but I'll be working on that next. But I really love this story. It's very exciting. It's about a woman uh, uh, planning a revenge, sort of like the Count of Monte Cristo. So I'm really, really excited to tell that story. Uh, I think people are going to love it. I've had a few people kind of test read the first three chapters, and they're like, come on, send us more, send us more. So I think this is going to be great. And then I have a romance I started writing. I have about maybe a third written, and that's going to be set in Italy. So I just write stories as they come to me. I don't have a certain genre. And I write stories, and I like to tell people that I want to put my characters in sort of extraordinary circumstances, mm -hmm. just kind of throw some challenges at them and see what happens. And then, you know, just my imagination just sort of takes over. But, yeah, I have a lot of stories planned. I have all kinds of ideas, so... I probably will have, you know, three, four books coming sometime in the next couple of years, yeah. So you didn't self-publish this book, though, right? No, no, it's published through a publisher. Okay.
So then you just can go book by book. You can get it out there yeah. and get it. Yeah. Um, but this one is not going to be probably through the same publisher. It's going to be probably a different publisher because it's a, it's, the first publisher is more of a romance publisher. Right. This one being a suspense thriller, it's going to need to kind of go to a different publisher. So it's going to probably take me a little bit more time wow. to find somebody. I don't think it's going to take you that long. <laughs> I know. I think anybody who reads this, I don't think it's going to take them long at all. I love this cover too. I just was, you know, cause I had it on Kindle, which I don't get to see it as much, but since I have it like sitting in front of me, I just love, like, I want to show everybody if they can see the ring that is there and just the back of her head. I just love that picture. It's so cool. And I actually have, um, I'm going to show you a ring that this, that I use to describe in the book. Can you yes. see that? This is the ring that I kind of kept looking at as I was writing the story, but uh, they couldn't quite use it for the cover because I have to use special images. But I got really lucky with the cover designer. She really listened to me as to what I really wanted the cover to look like. But I love my cover. I absolutely love it. Oh, I do it's it's exactly what, you know, is happening in the story. It's great. And yeah, absolutely. And like I said, this is such an amazing story. I can't wait to read more stuff from you. <laughs> I really can. So, as it comes out, I'll my next book. Yes, please, please do. And I will have all of Elena's links listed under here um, so that you can find her. And I'll put the Amazon link so you can find this book. And like I said, everybody over on Instagram, they're loving this book. So I'm so happy to be able to tell you that, that, you know, in, Thank case, you. You, in case you can't see it, at least you can, you know, because those book bloggers, those are some serious people, okay? When they love a book, they will just send it everywhere. Read this book, read this book. And uh, so I love I love having them as friends because they always point me in the right direction. And they did not fail me. So I am so happy that I found you, Elena. Thank you. I love Instagram. And I have an Instagram blog tour uh, at the end of the month. I think my, my books can be everywhere. Oh, that's awesome. I never even heard of that. It's a new thing, I think. Uh, I, I heard about this and I was really excited because I'm, I'm on Instagram a lot these days and I do interact a lot with Instagrammers. So I was like, oh, they want to read my book. Great. You know what? Instagram is a great place for authors. I'm finding mm -hmm. I really didn't know that because all of you guys have Facebook pages, but you can't enter. It's too hard to interact. Instagram is an easier place to interact with the author, like I said, and all my book bloggers and everybody over there. They're always so nice and you know, sharing and everybody shares everybody, everything about everybody. So I love it. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, thank you so much, Elena. And yes, please, your next book, please. Send it my way. <laughs> yes, you'll be first on my list. And thanks for having yes. me over. Yes, thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi everyone, if you made it this far, that means you have watched Elena and I talk the whole time and I just wanna thank you. Um, I love this book. I'm so happy that I was able to read it and that um, I got so many people on Instagram saying read this book and I'm really, really happy I did and I'm really happy that Elena joined me so we could talk about it. Thank you, Elena. And if you like this video, please hit like and if you'd like to get updates on all my videos, please hit subscribe. Thanks everyone.